Hey, 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 what is going on, everyone? Well, I'm so glad that you have took your time to spend with me right here today on the MRB Wrestling Review Show. I'm your co-host, Mike McRock Wilson, and last night was NXT from the Full Sail University in Orlando, Florida. What I really like about this show last night is that the show kicked off and ended off with, ch with the championship matches. The NXT champ was the main event, which I will get to later on. And the show kicked off last night with the United States Championship, Dean Ambrose, going one-on-one -on -one with Adrian Neville. And like I said before, the roles are reversed in that Dean Ambrose is the guy that's um, helping out these younger guys to um, uh, build up to the main roster on Raw and SmackDown. So that was pretty interesting to say the least, and I don't know why Adrian Neville really is not there yet. Because that was a tremendous match that they showcased on NXT for the title and at the end what I like is that sometimes you know good timing is everything when uh, Adrian Neville you know uh, nailed his you know corkscrew moon stall, uh, shooting star uh, or whatever it is he calls it uh, when he got the one two out comes Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns three on one and then out comes his tag Andrew Neville's tag team, other half of the tag team chance, Corey Graves, and Xavier Woods. So that's kind of interesting because uh, Xavier Woods is a guy that can also be brought up as a uh, babyface on Raw and SmackDown. And from what I understand is that WWE is looking for an African American to sell merchandise, etc., etc. And I think Xavier Woods is a guy that could pro probably do that. And um, with that being said, um, all in all, that match was a very good one-on-one uh, -on -one match between uh, Dean Ambrose and uh, Adrian Neville. And what also came out of it is that next week there's going to be a six-man tag team match. The Shield will take on Adrian Neville, Corey Graves, and Xavier Woods. And I'm really looking forward to that match because The Shield right now are kind of mid Carter top tier guys on Raw and SmackDown. And now they're coming back to NXT to help the younger guys out in hopes to bring up themselves on Raw and SmackDown. Also last night in a uh, backstage segment, you know, we saw Scott Dawson and Sylvester LaFord with uh, Enzo and Colin Cassidy talking about next week's match against Mason Ryan. It will be Scott Dawson versus Mason Ryan one-on-one -on -one next week on NXT. And I think, you know, this is one of those matches where shenanigans are going to ensue. Enzo and Moore and Colin Cassidy are going to come out and probably interrupt. So I'm looking forward to that match. And with that being said, you know, you have these four guys who are really unique individuals, and I'm pretty much on board with these guys. So it's going to be entertaining and exciting, to say the least, to see what happens next week on NXT. And in especially this attention-seeking guy that comes up to the camera in the back doing this fist-pumping thing. A little bit more of that, too, as well. <laughs> because it's unique, it's different, and it's fresh and exciting. And with all that being said, you know... All these characters on NXT really solidifying that, you know, they are their own person. And then speaking of they are their own person, Tyler Breeze is another guy as well. I like the little things um, that he does throughout his match. He went one-on-one -on -one last night with Danny Burch, where uh, Tyler Breeze, of course, got the victory. And like I said, the little things that uh, happens throughout NXT like the announcer saying that Tyler Breeze has entered the building Tyler Breeze has left the building after his match and during this match I like you know the back and forth thing with him taking pictures and then you know applying a wrestling maneuver to his opponent going back to take pictures and then back and forth back and forth over and over again I like those little things like that because it you know it, it shows that this guy is different and with that being said, uh, Tyler Breeze got the victory. Um, he, he, he's the guy, I think, that can go in the ring. The only thing that should happen is that he needs to wrestle a little more just to showcase to see what else he can bring to the table in the squared circle. And uh, with that being said, you know, there is talk about him and Fa Dango probably, you know, in the tag team one-on-one. -on -one. 
etc., etc. I'm on board with that too. One day that will happen. I think Tyler Breeze is a guy that already could be on the main roster, but I like to see, you know, bit by bit by bit. This is just one of those things where you just slowly build it up to something great. And that's just one of those situations where that should happen. Also on NXT, you know, we saw Summer Rae and Emma in a dance battle. It was quite entertaining to say the least. I thought as dance battles go, it was entertaining, it was exciting with the Emma dance and playing Fondago's music and Summer Rae dancing. She's a good dancer. I think Summer Rae, you know, you know, when it comes to dancing is, you know, technically a little a bit better than Emma, but what I like is that, you know, you know, the, the silly things go over with the fans. And that's one of those things, the Emma dance. And with that being said, you know, I know they said the winner of this match will face Paige next week for the uh, NXT Women's Champ, but what I like about that was that even though Emma won the dance battle, it was too soon for her to be in that situation, to face Paige already, for the NXT champ, even though they already had a match for Page One, he she is the rightful uh, title holder. But putting Emma in that situation is just a little too soon. So I like that you know they use the attack from behind. Uh, Summer Rae did on Emma. They use that to the storyline and put her in that situation so that Page can go over um, Summer Rae next week on NXT for the NXT Women's Champ. That I don't mind. So, with that being said, um, one day, you know, there will be a match between Emma and Paige for the NXT Women's Champ. It, it just can't, uh, I'd rather see it uh, later than sooner. That's all. And the main event was Bo Dallas versus Leo Kruger for the NXT Championship. What I really like about that match was that, um, you know, uh, backstage with, uh, with Renee and he was singing just before he left. Don't stop believing. Here's the interesting thing. I done my research and um, Bo Dallas is uh, Bray Wyatt's younger brother in real life and their father is IRS, believe it or not. And um, you know, he's Bo Dallas is so like his older older brother because we see Bray Wyatt sometimes singing after he cuts a promo. He sings, "Time is on my side," you know, it's, you know, it's, it's stuff like that, right? So you know, like like brother, like brother. Yeah, I, I, I like those little things like that. And, and what's also interesting is that during that backstage interview with with Renee Young is that. You know, he's talking about things that only heels kind of talk about. And I think that Bo Dallas is a guy that they should have turned heel already. And with that being said, you know, Leo Kruger gaining more chance than Bo Dallas does gaining more chance. So with that being said, I think that's the reason why Bo Dallas, you know, should be, a you know, a, you know the top heel and have, you know, like, Someone like Adrian Neville, uh, uh, being brought up as the uh, main guy on NXT, but I don't know if they'll go that route. And uh, Bo Dallas right now is kind of you know coming off as an overrated you know superstar you know like John Cena is on WWE, so I don't know if they should go that route with Bo Dallas. They should turn him heel, and you know. Little things like after his win, after um, he bet Kruger, you know, holding up the champ and the smoke coming down. That's only, you know, stuff that a heel does. So I think stuff like that really should turn, they really should turn Bo Dow's heel. And with that being said, what I really like about that match against Leo Kruger is that at the end he done this weird twisted uh, submission move where... Leo Kruger's arm really shouldn't been that way. It was really cringeworthy. I was like, oh, that was like, oh, man, that was horrible. But in the same time, it was really cool and effective. So I like that he got the submission victory because Leo Kruger's specialty is submission holds. And with all that being said, Bo Dallas, still the NXT champ. And I think he'll be champ for a while. And 
I think he'll have a good title run before he's written off and hopefully comes back to the main roster on Raw and SmackDown because that's why NXT exists. It exists for the superstars of tomorrow in hopes to be on Raw and SmackDown. And that was my review of last night's NXT episode from the Full Sail University in Orlando, Florida. For the MRB Wrestling Review Show, I make make rock Mike make rock Wilson. And to all your viewers watching, get plenty of rest and always do your best. <laughs>